Welcome to a Sandwich and Some Lovin' podcast. I am Kelly Raspberry Evans. I am a podcast host, and I am also a married woman. I happen to be married to my podcast co-host, and his name is Alan Evans. Hello, Alan. A trade in the house. Yes, there he is, in all his glory. <sighs> Haven't been here for a while in all my glory. It's been a couple of weeks. We took a week off last week. We did. We had a lot going on last week. It was a busy week. Busy yeah. Time. Yeah, I'm glad to be back. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back. I wonder if our listeners are glad we're back. We'll find out. We're going to find out. That's right. But a lot has happened in the last two weeks. A lot has happened in the last two weeks. Yeah, some great. Some not so great. Some sad stuff happened, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we, uh, we're going to touch on that, too, I believe. Yeah. I would like to get that off my chest. It's been a week of highs and lows. It really has. But... Um, I think a lot of our conversation will revolve around an event that we went to. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it will will probably be about that. Okay. Uh, We've got that. We also have letters. A few follow-up letters from last time. Um, Not too much drama. I can't. I don't have the bandwidth. No, no, no. No, these aren't drama. These are these are funny. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, these, these these are these are not uh, our very our new very best customer, uh, good strong uh, JC, uh, gave us a follow up letter. So I thought we'd go through. That. You'll have to remind me what the original letter was. He was the one that said I wore him down. Oh yeah, and he kept throwing in like and yeah, he'll yeah, say yeah. I wasn't on the eagle. That right. Yeah, and then he and then he that was only one podcast ago, but right. it seems like forever ago because we took last week off. <laughs> right. But then he gave it another chance, and then he said, um, I kind of grew on him like a fungus. Not mm. his words, my words. Mm. Um, and now he's a big fan, and then I bestowed very best customer status upon him. Is he from our area? Does he live near us? I don't know if he's from... Is there any clue to indicate that? I can't remember if Good Strong JC is from God's country or not. We're looking for you know places we can vacation as cheaply as possible, and yeah. perhaps you know a guest room might be made available. Yeah, we still have to go to Montana to visit um, your your very good friend Luke. Luke, yeah, Stephen, Stephen Luke. Luke. Um, okay, we're gonna jump right into it. So, okay. about a week ago, I'm just I think I'm just I don't know probably sit, you were in here sitting on my easy chair or was I was I in here in here where you usually are and my? I'm usually out there, way out there. In the other room by myself. Okay. And a, uh, a textual message pops up on my phone. Bloop, bloop. And I'm like, huh. Huh. How about that? And it was a text from one of the dads who um, Dylan plays. He, he's one of the coaches that coaches basketball. His son plays on the same basketball team as Dylan. Yes. His name is Kingston. Isn't that a great name? Yeah, yeah. That's the same name as Gwen Stefani's son. Is that right? With Gavin Rossdale. Yeah. So uh, the dad's name is Keith, but his son's name is Kingston. Kingston is a, I've told his mom and dad before, Kingston is so funny and polite. He's a good boy. He is so polite. Parents need to know that because, you know, when I send Emma Kelly out into the world, I'd like to think that she is charming elsewhere. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, so, so I, as opposed to here, <laughs> I don't get a lot of messages from Keith, but uh, Keith texted me, and Keith is in the he's in the the spirits business. So is he a liquor rep? We're not exactly sure what his job I is. I refer but, to him as a liquor rep, and I don't know well, if that was right. I, I don't know that he's the guy calling on the liquor stores selling liquor, mm. but he, I think he is more of a. I think he's more of a boss type. Okay. A boss I, man. I probably mislabeled him. I think he's more of a boss man type. For that, I apologize. Anyway. But I think liquor rep's cool, too. Anyway, he's in the liquor business. So Keith sends me this text, and it says, Hey, what?" and this is Wednesday. He says, What are you and Kelly doing tomorrow night? Because we have an event for this new vodka, and there's going to be a very special guest. And I'm like, well... Sounds pretty fun, but who's the special guest? He said, that'd be Big Jason Momoa. Yeah, it would. Jason Momoa? Yeah. Like, you gotta be kidding me. Jason Momoa? He's Not coming to, kidding. Why is he coming to Dallas? Well, he and a buddy of his, Jason, his, best friend. his best friend, his BFF named Blaine, 
have been working on this vodka for how long? Is it? Seven eight, years? Eight, eight years, eight I years? think they said. Yeah. I talked to Blaine for a well, we're I'm jumping ahead. Let's let you get to that point. Yeah, okay. So so I asked Kelly, I said, Hey, here's the deal. We we are gonna possibly go to this event tomorrow. Do you wanna go? It's it's he invited us, complimentary tickets. It's down in uh, Dallas, where we don't go very often. It's this place called the Happiest Hour, which we've never been to. So I said it'd be kind of fun, right? And you know, Kelly and I have been to these types of things before, Dime, where you know they invite us and there's gonna be a VIP. There'll be a VIP, and sometimes you may see the VIP from across the room, the top of their head. Maybe right. that's them. Right, right, right. Now we've been lucky in that usually when we're invited to these events, we have actually met the VIP. Every once in a while. John Bon Jovi. Yes. Steve Harvey. Yes. And. Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil? <laughs> but we've also Nancy been, Grace? We've also been to events where... Emmett? We've also been to events where the star is way over there. True. Okay. True. Now, I have So been, what was this going to be? We weren't sure. We weren't sure. And, and, yeah, true, because I was invited to an event one time when Troy was there. Me and Robert stopped talking, and it, where I had the most embarrassing moment of my life. It's probably the worst picture you've ever taken. The worst picture I've ever taken. <laughs> But it makes me laugh. Kelly loves it. It's so you bad. You love laughing at my well, misfortune. Well, because Troy is oh, perturbed, and you're like, he was, you're, you're bewildered. He this was the so pissed off at me. No, I think he was <laughs> at pissed off at He was pissed off at the situation. Yeah, not you personally. Right. But anyway. And I had Kim Jong-un hair. Yeah, you were looking rough. But anyway, <clears throat> I had just gone to Dallas the night before. So going back, and we live up in the suburbs, just like going back down to the Dallas two nights in a row. With the possibility we're going to see Jason Momoa sounds pretty cool. Now, if you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you know that over the past week or two, we have been blessed with monsoon after monsoon. It's been really bad. We've had lots of flooding, wind damage, people without power. It's been a mess. We've been very fortunate. We've only had a couple of trees. Alan's out there replanting a tree today, as a matter of fact. I was. But we've been very lucky. However, this day we were supposed to go meet Mr. Possibly meet Mr. Momoa. It was pouring rain. And Alan and I are like, should we go? Should we not go? I'm like, we need to go. We need to go. Because, you know, Keith was nice enough to invite us. It could be really cool. Something to talk about. Even if we don't meet him, it's still something to talk about, right? Well, wouldn't you know it? It stopped raining. It stopped raining. And it was a monsoon. It like I said, it had been a monsoon. We were in mm -hmm. monsoon season. Yeah. But um, we both got dressed up, and we hauled our butts down to Dallas. We did. In record time. That's the thing about the tollway. You never know. You could leave an hour early and still be two hours late if there's a wreck or something. But we got there actually early, Alan. Showed up at the happiest hour. Uh, let me uh, paint a visual picture. It's called the happiest hour. It's a Cool sports bar in Dallas. Yeah, it's a double level thing. It has a rooftop. You walk up these stairs and then there's a rooftop bar. Really, really nice place. Lots of TV screens, which I appreciated because the Mavericks were on game six. Uh, the game they closed, uh, they closed out the Western Conference Finals to advance. But because we were early, we decided to grab a cocktail downstairs before we went upstairs. We did. And as we're in... They were very inexpensive. <laughs> That's like Los Vegas. It's like Las Two Vegas. drinks were like 30 bucks. 35 bucks. 35 bucks. It's like Las Vegas prices. Just ridiculous, but whatever. So anyway, uh, we get in the VIP <clears throat> and then I, the, the VIP line. But I said to Alan oh. and before, we were like sipping our very pricey cocktails. And I said, you know, I kind of sometimes miss living down in the city, you know, having access to all these things. Kind of cool. And he's like, I'm paying 35 bucks for two drinks. I'm like, yeah, snap me back to reality. Yeah. Anyway. So we ordered a couple of drinks. We're waiting in line. Um, and we get up to the guy checking the, the list. He has the list. And he looks at us. Because Al, everybody else has their phones out. <laughs> and Alan printed his tickets out. I did. Out. I did. He's like, I'm not taking any chances. I'm printing my tickets. You know why? <laughs> You're the only one. You know why? Because here's what happened. The la When I took Cole to the Mavericks, you know, everything is electronic now. Ticketmaster, Mavericks tickets. And... The parking ticket, as I'm trying to get into parking, there's a line behind me of a thousand cars trying to get into the parking. And you got to show them your electronic ticket to get into the Lexus parking garage. 
do you think that that came up with my Wi-Fi experience? <laughs> so I'm like trying not to curse in front of Cole. And I did not. I did not curse in front of Cole. But the lady's just looking at me, and I'm fumbling with my phone. Cole's just kind of like shaking his head like, Dad, what are you doing? Why you like, screen grab it? Didn't accept screen grabs. Really? Nope. So laugh at me if you, if you want, but that's the reason I printed these tickets because okay, I didn't laughing. right because I didn't want a, a revisit on that experience. So anyway, we get up to the list where the guy has the list. Didn't even want to see your didn't paper. even want to see the paper. He looks at me. He's like, name. I'm like, Evans. He's like looking at the list. First name. Walter. I thought you said Alan. You You're said not Alan. on the list. Oh, yeah. I'm like, that's because my middle name is Alan. Wait. You asked for my first name. <laughs> no, it did not go like that. It did not go like that. It did go like this. He said, finish those drinks before you go upstairs. This is a melee event only. Yeah. And we had just barely taken two sips. And I'm sorry. I cannot chug like that. Oh, I did. I was just like, I was forcing it down. I thought I was going to throw up. but I Because I was not going to leave any of my very expensive drink undrunk. So I sat there and I forced it down so we could get upstairs. And we get to the top of the stairs and we look over the bar area and the first thing we see is Jason Momoa. He's on the opposite side of the bar from where we're standing. But there's a long line waiting to get drinks because they're only serving Maylee. It's pronounced Maylee. Maylee. Even though it's spelled M-A-I-L-M-E-I-L-I. M-E-I-L-I. Rhymes with pronounced. Bailey. Remember Bailey. Maylee. That's how we remember it. Right. So anyway, but while people were waiting in line, because they were giving out free free samples of this drink, not like the $35 for two downstairs, so that made up for it, That's right? That's I said. We ought to just wait until we go upstairs, because it was going to be free up there, but whatever. Well, I don't know. We, we, I don't remember who twisted whose arm. I don't know. No one twisted either one of our arms. Right. We, we just paid. We just bellied up. So anyway, he's greeting people while mm -hmm. they're waiting in line. Mm -hmm. And so we, we kind of walk around and I notice his best friend, Mr. Blaine, mm -hmm. I came to find out, was standing over there. I said, well, we should go meet him because, you know, he's there too promoting his vodka. Can we paint a visual picture of what we saw, though? Sure, you paint it because I don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, from across the bar, like you said, we walked up and we were like, I was like, oh my God, there he is. Mm -hmm. Holy moly. He's Very like, tall. Very tall. He's like 6'6", six, six, we think. He's, Big. he's verbally said 6'6". Six, six. He's wearing a bowler hat. Guy a had a bowler guy hat. Guy had a leather bowler hat Very on. cool. Oh. You could not get away with that. No. I can't wear any hat except a cap. Yeah. Any other hat on me and I look like Paddington Bear. Like those stupid um, hats we got at the Rangers game for free. Everybody oh, God. If you want to make my nose look even bigger than it already is, <laughs> put a freaking bucket hat on my head. Anyway. How does that happen? How I does don't a hat know. make your nose look bigger? I, I don't know. Because you look great in hats. I look ridiculous. I didn't look good in that bucket hat. <laughs> Even you look good in the bucket I, okay, hat. Okay, I did. You look nice in bucket hats. Okay, so anyway. I'm like, there he is. 6'6", six, six, leather bowler hat on, black t-shirt, cool like, they weren't Ray-Bans, but they were these cool black shades with kind of a, a maroonish, yeah, rose-colored, like, yeah, you can see his eyes through these things. So I'm like, holy crap, there's freaking Aquaman. There he is. So nice. Just talking to everybody. Not yeah. us. Not us yet. Not us yet. Yeah. So you sorry, sorry, Blaine said over there, and Blaine, they're, oh, they're both so cool. They're wearing like leather jackets and beat up boots and dusty old beat up bowlers. They both have the same kind of vibe. If you go to their Instagram, you can see what I'm talking about. So anyway, we went up and just started talking to Blaine and he wanted to know, you know, it was I a vodka drinker. I'm like, yeah, look at my tattoo. I'm like, that's my drink is a vodka martini. And he wanted to know my vodka of choice. And I told him, I said, I know you're in Texas and Tito's is what everybody drinks here. But, you know, Tito's was started here, but it's not based here anymore, FYI. Anyway, I said, um, I went to a vodka tasting. I, I like Most people do wine tastings, tequila tastings. I've been to a vodka tasting and I found out there that I liked Grey Goose. But it was a Grey Goose event, right? And he was explaining to me how um, they give you the cheap crap up front, which is what they did at the vodka tasting I went to. But then you're like, your taste buds get numb. And so by the time you get to the end, everything tastes great. And I was like, well, that makes sense. 
But since then, I've been drinking Chopin pretty exclusively. If they have Chopin, that's what I get. Grey Goose is my second. He said, well, I want you, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side taste test with you. They kind of made a face when you said that, too. Oh, but he was there. They're there to change minds. That was the challenge, right? But he said they've made this vodka to be a sipping vodka. Mm-hmm. Nobody does sipping vodkas, right? It's sipping tequilas. Usually you mix vodka with something. Right. He said that's it. Vodka is more of a, what did he say? An ingredient? Yeah. What did he say? Or a mixer? I think that's what he said. An ingredient. An ingredient. Yeah. He said, but we want to make this like a sipping vodka. And he said room temperature. It can't be room temperature is the way they served it to me. And that sounded weird to me at first. It, it was like, I like really cold vodka, but room temperature? Really? And he brought it to us, and we sampled it, and it was really good. It was very good. It was very good. It was very smooth. It didn't have that burning bite to it that you sometimes, you know, whenever you do a drink, you're like, oh, you know. It wasn't like that. It didn't smell funny. It didn't. It was really nice. And while we're talking to Blaine, mm -hmm. suddenly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. look over mm -hmm. my shoulder, and mm -hmm. it's freaking Jason Momoa. Standing right there next to us. I think he appreciated that we were taking so much time with his friend. And that was not a calculated move on my part, honestly. But I always feel I've been that person who's been overlooked. <laughs> and so I, I don't like anybody to feel that way. So that's why we were talking to Blaine. Welcome to my world. Right, I feel for you too when you're with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're sipping vodka and talking to Blaine, having a good time. And here comes up Jason he Momoa is. himself, at least a head taller than me. He left the line and came over Yes, to yes he did. And we just, I mean, I wish I could repeat to you verbatim what we talked about. Oh, I can. I, I, I you know, I my short-term memory is really bad. Well, but it was very pleasant and lovely, and we talked about how, you know, they were they were scared. Texas was the last state they came to because they know Tito's has such a stronghold, mm -hmm. right? And that's why they chose Texas as their last stop. And they talked about how, was it Blaine that told us they, they followed the National Geographic Explorers around trying to find the perfect water source for their vodka? I think he mentioned that. Yeah. And then uh, Jason and um, Blaine, because Blaine's from Colorado, he said we've gotten to a little, you know, disagreement over is it going to be Hawaii or Colorado. He said, I had to admit Colorado had the better water. I remember that. Yeah. The, the two things that I can remember very vividly were uh, Keith asked me kind of off the side, I think while you were talking to Blaine, what do you want to drink? And he asked you too. And you said a martini with blue cheese, olives, blah, blah, blah. Keith ran and got those drinks. So he handed one of those to you and one of those to me. So I had a martini in one hand. So I'm sipping on that. And then somebody put the sipping, just the neat vodka in my other hand. So now I'm two-fisting it. So we're talking to Blaine. You're standing there. Blaine is right there. Jason walks up. Jay. <clears throat> Jay walks up. Did he tell you to call him Jay? Well, Blaine was calling him Jay. Oh, you can't call him Jay. Jay walks up. Oh, you sound J ridiculous. Jason Momoa walks up. Yeah, it's Jason Momoa. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember this. I have a drink in each hand. He looks at me, he goes in for the bro, like the handshake. And I'm like, I panicked. I'm like, well, I can't drop the drink. What do, I don't know what to do. So I gave him a kind of a, I, I took a couple of fingers off my right hand and, and kind of gave him a two finger handshake. That's so weird. Yeah. And then I put the other arm kind of around his shoulder with the drink in my hand. Oh, wow. And kind of. It couldn't have been more awkward. Yeah. How embarrassing. Why do is. I always have these kind of things happen to me? But he, he came in for that. But he could clearly see I had a drink in each hand. Yeah, he was just he's so he was so excited. Yes. He was just really hyped up and pumped up for his for his vodka. So I told Kelly on the way, I swear on the way down there, I said, Babe, I said, We're probably not gonna get to talk to him, but if we do, I've got some material. I said, Did you know he is a brand ambassador for Harley Davidson? <gasps> he Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> No, he does a lot of things, but yes. the reason I know this is because, you know, I ride Harleys. I follow Harley very closely. He's also, he has a clothing line with Harley. He's also directed the short films for Harley Davidson. And I've watched them, and I've watched them a million times. They're really cool. I Before think, you ever knew you were going to meet Jason yeah, Momoa, yeah, yeah. You, you really did watch yeah, them. Yeah, and they're really cool. He's in some of them, and it's just really, they're just cool, you know. 
So I said, if I get a chance to talk to him, I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to say, hey, I've watched those short films that you directed, and I really love them. So sure as shit, I did. I did. You did. Because I was just like panicked. I knew one of us was going to do it. I was it, like, yeah. hi, Mr. Ma. My husband loves your yes. short film <laughs> for Harley <laughs> Davidson. And then they, they started talking about that. Yeah, and so then he goes... I don't, I, it's going to be hard to distinguish my Jason Momoa from my boss man George. You weren't mad at me for bringing it up. No, no, no. no. I was just like, was I just, just jumped on it. It. Just, it just got the conversation going. And after yeah. you brought up motorcycles, then Kelly started talking about, well, I'm a brand ambassador for Can Am. I'm a and... brand ambassador. And he honestly, he stopped, he had been talking, and he put his hand on my arm and he said, That's really great. Congratulations. It's so yes. sincere. Yes. He was like, that's really great. Congratulations. Uh -huh. He sure did. He he sure did. Uh, another thing I, call. another thing I can remember is he said uh, I said Kelly said my husband loves your short films and I said yeah I've watched them a, a million times and he said well have you watched um, have you watched this uh, other thing I directed and I can't it remember was a long form one yeah the long form that and I'm like uh, no Not I, that I didn't one. See it. because it's on HBO Max and that's the reason I have never seen it. But I was like, no, I, I haven't seen that one, but I love those ones you did with Harley. And I said, um, I said, you know, I, I ride, I, and I know he rides. I said, have you been riding lately? He goes, no, I, I haven't been riding lately. Uh, he goes, what do you got? And I said, oh, I've got three Harleys. He goes, that's it? You have two. Three. There's three in there. You got a third one? Babe, you've, there's three bikes in the garage right now. You, you sold one and got two. You sold two and got one. Do you want to hash this out now, or do you want to keep the story going? When did you get the third one? Go ahead. Do you want to hash this out now, I or do you want to keep the, or do you want to keep the story Go going? Ahead. You have got the worst memory of anybody sold. I have ever met in my in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Go ahead. Are you serious? I thought we only had two. Can, you want me to keep going with the Go story? Ahead. So he goes. He said, "Do you ride?" And I said, "Yeah, I, I have three Harleys." And he goes, "That's it. That's all you got?" And I said, "Well, yeah." I said, "I don't have garage space for more." And Kelly pipes in and is like, that's all he needs is just the three. And he goes, that's not true. You need you can need a bigger garage. See, it's kind of like Boss Man, but that's pretty much the gist of what he said, right? I don't remember that conversation, obviously. Good Lord. But I do remember I said that you did the iron butt and went up to Sturgis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You threw that in and he said... Um, you said, have you ever been to Sturgis? I said, you ever been to Sturgis? Um, you know, it's a lot of fun. And he said, no, I've, ne I've never been. And I said, how come? He goes, dude. He called me dude. He said, dude, I get freaking mobbed up there. I can't go to Sturgis. <laughs> I can't go to Sturgis. And I thought, well, God, that's kind of sad. Yeah, it wouldn't be fun for him, right? I guess, I guess not, unless he had a... Unless he was getting paid. Yeah, unless he was doing an appearance. Yeah. Because I know, I know celebrities go up there. But they probably have, they're probably getting paid to do it. But I swear, I, like a couple of times, I was trying to give, I was trying to thank you. Thank you, Mr. Momo. It was so great to give him an out. And he wouldn't take it. He kept talking. I tried like a couple of times. And then finally he had to give a toast. And, and uh, that's when he said farewell to us. Yeah, he talked, Kelly and I were saying, he talked to us so long that we were almost like, we felt kind of uncomfortable. A little bit. Like, we felt like, well, people are looking at us like maybe we we're, were hogging, we're his, hogging time. his time. But we kept saying, well, we really appreciate you having us and thank you so much. And he just so kept. So nice to meet you. He just kept talking, you know? Yeah. Made a couple of lewd jokes, too. He was not. I think it was just kind of like. Are you kidding like me? Those, it was like an innuendo thing. You didn't, even, you didn't even get them. They were so lewd. Oh, really? Really. Yes. I don't think they were that lewd. Yes, really. Okay, why don't you give us an example? No, I'm not going to because they're that lewd. Okay, why don't you like hint around, dance around it? I can't. Well, you have to tell me off the air because I don't recall anything being that lewd. Yeah, I can't. I did see, okay, I did see this meme and I sent it to Craig Shocker and Sweezen Shocker. Because it was all the different hand signals in, in like the, what is it? The, the shocker is. Yeah, two in the, yeah, whatever. Right. And, and the, the showstopper is one in the front. And oh, I don't need, no, 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 no. We don't need to be doing that. I just told you, that, but you wanted me to do this. Now That's here I you, am. That was what the joke was about? Three in the back. And like the minivan is five in the back. Okay. It had to do with that, that? Okay. kind of stuff. 
and we were giggling about it, but you had no idea what we were talking about. Okay. Okay. I know what you're talking about now. Let's not talk about that. You told me two seconds ago. I didn't know that's to, what you were talking about. To I must you. not have heard it because no, you I heard... was there. I know what you're talking about. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. No, you heard it. You just okay, didn't know let's what just we were. Move on. Okay, okay. Um, so he went and did his toast, and I think that was, then you and I were kind of like we kind of pieced oh, out. Oh no, wait. We got before he left though. We got a picture. Oh yeah, he did the big owl move where he said, "Give me your phone." He grabbed my he, phone. Yeah, we got behind him and he did one of those where he takes the, took a selfie with us. He did the what? Yeah. And he was like ah, yeah. like big exactly like yeah. big owl does it. And then we pieced out. He was heading to Austin after Dallas. He said um, they were they were going out to eat sushi, um, and then they were going to drive to Austin because they had another liquor signing there. And I think that was going to be their last stop. Another, they go to liquor stores and they sign the bottles so you could purchase one signed by Blaine and Jason. Mm -hmm. And then he had his band performing that night at Stubbs. So he had a busy day. And I said, are you going to be seeing Joe Rogan this trip? And he said, no, probably not this trip. So anyway, that was it. And then we just pieced out and got home in time to watch the last quarter of the Mavericks game. Congratulations to your Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. Closed out the um, Minnesota Timberwolves and advanced to the NBA Finals. So last year, Rangers won the World Series. This year, the Dallas Stars got to the Finals, but they got beat. Yeah. So but it, they, did, they did very they well. They got to the Finals. Uh, the Western Finals, so Edmonton advanced to the Stanley Cup Finals. And then now you've got the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA Finals. That leaves one team. Your, the, the Cowboys. Your Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. On a serious note, speaking of, just yesterday, I was I was in the Ross parking lot. I just returned it's something. It's on Monday. Yes, Monday. No, I was about to go into Whole Foods to return something for Amazon, and I was just about to get out of the car. A message pops up on my phone. It's a news thing. It said, Larry Allen, ex-cowboy, Hall of Fame member, Ring of Honor inductee. Only 52. 52 years old, died while on vacation with his family in Mexico. I'm like, my heart just immediately sank, and like the hair on my arm stood up. I'm like, this has got to be, this is not true, right? It was true. Larry Allen died yesterday, 52 years old. So those of you who don't know, Larry Allen played on the teams with Troy and Emmett and Michael Irvin. He was probably, he's considered by most people as the greatest offensive lineman to ever, play, to ever play football. I mean, he was a great, great player. Obviously didn't know the guy, but by all accounts, a very humble guy, quiet guy, kind of an introverted guy. But um, just one of the greatest athletes you've ever seen. The guy could bench 700 pounds. Mm. He could squat 900 pounds, and he could run. He was fast. Yeah, they were showing some highlights on. Oh my gosh! Online, Emmett Smith was. Um, I didn't catch it live, but he posted it and he was talking about it, and he was just so torn up. And um, but he was saying, you know. He was reminding everybody to hug people, tell them you love them, because you never know. You know, tomorrow's not guaranteed to any of us. But he was saying that, you know, Larry just, once he walked away from football, he walked away. He never came to any of their get-togethers or anything. He put, you know, he just moved on. It, was, it wasn't like a bad thing. He just, like, that part of, that chapter of my life was closed. And he had pretty young children. I, know. I don't know how old they are. Two daughters and a, and a son, Larry Jr., and um, as of, you know, maybe by the time the podcast drops, we'll know more about what happened, but we don't know what happened. No, we don't know point. what happened. But yeah, 50, so sad. 52, that's my age. I mean, he was born in 71. And um, I was telling Kelly, you know, when, when the news popped up, I got up, I did get upset. I was like, I was very sad. And I was telling Kelly, I said, I'm noticing a pattern now because with the Red Lobster thing, which to a lot of people would sound really ridiculous if I tried to explain to somebody why reading this statement for Red, Red Lobster made me upset. And then this news with Larry Allen, you know, it's like, I was telling Kelly, when these little pieces of either your childhood or things that made you feel good when you were younger, when they're, when they're taken away, it's like, ugh, it's like getting stabbed, you know? It's like, oh man, that really, really hurts. Yeah, that's why so many people took the death of Kid Craddock so hard. Yeah. 
because he was a part of so many people's childhoods. And that's, you know, I had people come up to me and they're like, I don't know why I'm so upset. I that's cannot why. stop crying. I said, because yeah. he represented, you know, a very special, happy, you know, idyllic time in your life, your childhood. So. And, you know, with Larry Allen, it's, it's strange because, you know, a lot of people might not get this or understand this, but, you know, I love those Cowboys. <laughs> I did. I do. And I make fun of the team all the time, right? But that's something I grew up with. Still your team. It's still my team. I, it's something I grew up with. And when I was in my early 20s, when I first moved to Dallas, that's when the Cowboys were really, really good, you know? So I have those really fond memories of just everyone being so happy and watching the games together and they were winning and it was so fun. And, you know, time goes on, the, the players retire, and then you remember, you have these very fond memories of players like Larry Allen. And then when you get this message, like, he just died? It's like, no, that can't be true. It's true. It was true. So, very sad. But he was a great, great player. If, you, um, if you're ever bored, if you go on YouTube and just look up Larry Allen highlights, it is literally like watching a grown man playing football against little kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, he Big. Just, Big thro boy. just throwing guys around, and they had no chance, but... What did you, speaking of Red Lobster, you got so upset about Flavor Flav <laughs> went into a Red Lobster and bought one of everything on the menu. He said he's going to save Red Lobster and those cheddar biscuits. <laughs> God, I hope so. So he ordered one of everything on the menu, Alan. Speaking of. That's a lot. Speaking of ex-Cowboys and Red Lobster, this Frisco Red Lobster right up the road, I remember years ago. This was a long time ago, babe, before we met. I went in there, and Deion Sanders was in there with his entire family. Mm -hmm. They were sitting in the corner, just at a, one of those round tables. Everybody loves Red Lobster. There, and I'm like, it's Cheddar Bay Biscuits. It's freaking Deion Sanders. And he, but he was over there with his whole family, so I didn't go over there and you know, mess with him or anything. But. Well, after we did that podcast where Alan got so upset, Emma Kelly was saying something about, is our Red Lobster closing? And I was like, well, you know, I've got a box of the Cheddar Bay Biscuit mix in the pantry, and I made, I made those biscuits. She loved those. Those were good. If you haven't tried them, you should get them from the grocery store. They're very good. Easy to make, too. That's one thing I couldn't screw up. I screwed up supper tonight, too. I keep trying things, and I keep screwing it up. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's bring it home for Jerome, and we're going to do three letters. Okay. Three letters. He didn't comment on me saying I screwed up supper tonight. You just blowing past it? He didn't screw it up. It just, the Raymond had a very, it was very earthy. It I found a, a recipe very, on Instagram that I yeah, tried. It had a very, like, peat moss type flavor. Mm, that's not what I was going for. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, I just appreciate... Some Instagram recipes are probably really great. That one... Well, I'm, it's probably my fault. I just appreciate, I appreciated you trying. <laughs> I tried to try. This first letter is from Ariana. Subject, Kid and Alan. Hi, Alan and Kelly. I thought about this question for a while and finally decided to email y'all. Kelly, I know that Alan and Kid will never be able to meet, so how do you think that would have gone and how would their relationship be? I can imagine Kid being overprotective at first and maybe picking on Alan a bit, but I can also imagine them going back and forth with lewd jokes once they got comfortable, comfortable with each other. I would have loved to have seen them have a relationship as they are both such special men in your life. Thank you for all the joy you bring to me and the world. Your podcast is a true comfort to me. Kelly, I love you so much, and I have been a faithful listener since 200 B.C. Aw, thank you. Just kidding. LOL. <laughs> love you desperately. <laughs> Yogurt. Ariana from San Antonio. Well, thank you, Ariana. You know, I just celebrated my 30th anniversary with the Kid Craddock Morning Show. National Sunday Kid. And um, Kid and I would fight like a married couple, you know. And I always said, just... <laughs> Get me to 20 years, and you can fire me. Whoa. <laughs> and then he died. Um, it, after we worked together for 19 years, it's hard to believe. 19 years we worked together. But um, I don't really know. I, you know, Kid gave a lot of guys that I, I dated a few men that you heard me talk about on the radio, but not all of them, because I can, you can kind of gauge who is going to be a good sport about the ribbing Kid would give them. Um, a lot of guys wouldn't, they would just flat out tell me they wouldn't go out with me because of me being on the radio because they did not want to be talked about. And I could say, well, you know, what am I going to say? I don't want to sound pathetic. I don't have to talk about you, but I mean, you know, anyway, I don't know. I think that they would have gotten along 
But I also know that Kid loves to, you know, he loved to stir up trouble and stuff. And he would pick a lot. And I just don't know if Alan would have stuck around <laughs> for it. I mean that's just being honest. I don't I don't know. But I think they would have I think I think y'all would have gotten along. I do. But like you said, we'll never know. Uh, we'll never know. But it would have been a lot of hazing. Yeah. And you'd have to be really adamant about wanting to hang in there with me long enough to fall in love with me. <laughs> well Yeah, this is hard because it's a hypothetical, like I just remember, I mean, I, I never asked Kelly to talk about me or not talk about me. I just knew she had to do her thing. and I just talked about my life. Yeah, and whatever happened was going to happen. And but, you know, we kid would get us, you know, we'd get in trouble at home sometimes because we have, you know, we'd talk about our lives. And that's, you know, he wanted us to be, you know, honest and share our lives. That's why the show was such a success. But then, you know, sometimes we'd have to go home to <laughs> girlfriends or boyfriends or husbands or wives that weren't really necessarily happy with what happened. So you had to have a strong relationship to withstand yeah. that. Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to say. Um, I can tell you that in my life, as I look back at all the people that I've become close to and really, you know, vibed with or have had a, a good, strong relationship with, I tend to be attracted to people that have big, strong personalities. Well, then you would be attracted to Kid. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, you know, my friend David, the magician. Mm -hmm. Big, big personality. Loves to pick on me. Loved to always pick on me and haze me. He was like a big brother. Well, then you'd probably be able to handle Kid fine. Then. Bob. You've met Bob. Yeah. Bob. Big personality guy. You. I'm me? Mar yes. I'm married to you. Big personality. <laughs> yes. Uh, my friend Jeff, big personality. If I go back to college, I had a friend named Todd. Todd had a really, really funny, big personality. So I, I, I'm kind of like, wow, you know, I've always like really jived with people like that. So I don't know. I would like to think that we would have, there would have been some of that in the beginning. I'd have been like, well, yeah, I get it. He's picking on me because they're doing a bit, but... Over time, I'd like to have... <laughs> like, dude. I would like to have lighten thought up. that it would have lightened up and he would have kind of accepted it. But yeah. I don't know. And we'll never know. We will never know. But that's what I think. I know I could have always said, oh, Kim would have loved him. Y'all would have loved each other. But honestly, that's the truth. I don't know. This next letter is from Pam. Subject so spot on, Alan. Pam is referring to a bit we did, or I did, that had, people love lists, the list of things I see on social media, social media that annoy me. It was when I was going through that phase of being highly annoyed by everything, which I still kind of am. I was going to say, yeah. you're out of the phase? Yeah. Uh, subject, Pam, or oh, from Pam. Subject, so spot on, Alan. Weekend and catching up on a couple of the latest episodes. Alan, I thought I was the only person in the universe that absolutely despises that challenge. Looking for a favorite fill in the blank and go has always rubbed me the wrong way too. As you said, why can't these, why can't these numb nuts say? Why can't you say numb nuts? You gotta change your voice. What's wrong with numb nuts? That's Larry's nickname. Anyway. Why can't these numb, numb nuts oh say, gosh. looking forward to your suggestions or would appreciate different opinions? I wanted. I want to respond. I don't feel like running your race, so do your own research and stop being lazy. I have so many more that annoy me, but here are a few. Let's see. Adding to your list. Yeah, and people love lists. Of social media annoyances. Yes, social media. Just saying. My spirit animal. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know that I've ever used that. F well, F it's a it's a lot. Did, did did you say couple goals on yours? No, couple goals. I know I've never used couple goals. Let people say that about us, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's <it's> pretty funny. <laughs> FYI, asking for a friend. 
only used that maybe once or twice, but you you do that knowing asking for a friend is like it's really when it's for obvious me. you're it's asking for me. Yeah. Asking for a friend, yeah. you know? Yeah, like. I don't think I've over. I've maybe done it once. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I haven't. Like asking for a friend, I have a painful, itchy groin area, but I don't know what to do. Asking for a friend, yeah. Got to change your voice. Hold my beer. Oh yeah, so I'm getting ready to fight. Getting ready to do something. Yeah. Uh, her baby daddy. I say that. Okay. Because I like that song. That's just my baby daddy. That's just my baby daddy. Don't you love that song? Take a seat and or STFU. I don't like that. And they say, and have several seats. Well, how is that possible? I've never heard that. How is it possible to have several seats? Who shat in your post toasties? I say who sucked the red off your candy. <clears throat> Same thing. This is not an airport. No need to announce your departure. I don't hear that a lot. You know where I see this in Facebook groups. Oh. So I'm gonna I'll be in a Facebook group for a particular motorcycle. The dude or the gal sells the motorcycle because of all these problems they've had with the motorcycle, and they let the group know I'm out. I'm out of this group because I sold mine. You you knuckleheads, good luck. Having this model of this right. motorcycle. Then they could have just left. When they could have just, just left. left the group. So then you'll see somebody say, this is not an airport. No need to announce oh, your departure. okay. I get right, that. Right, right. I've never said it, but I've seen it. So many, many more, which makes me believe I'm on social media way too often. Or P Facebook, apparently. <laughs> Pam PJ in Plano. Hey, Pam's our neighbor. God's country. And finally... Okay, here's the last one. This is a follow-up letter, as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, from our new best, very best customer, Joshua. Good, strong JC. Subject, you got anything else? Dear Kelly and Alan, when I let each of my department heads go from our morning meeting today with, okay, insert your name here, you got anything else? And realize that I... I say that daily, I thought, what other podcast references do I make frequently? I'm a licensed nursing home administrator, by the way. So here are the, here are the podcast things he says, and then he catches himself. He's like, oh. I wonder if when he says that to the people he's with, if it's equally as annoying as I find it. Asking for a friend. <clears throat> Every time someone says friends, I think that's friends without the R. Get it, babe. Kill them slugs. <laughs> no longer a sponsor, FYI. <laughs> well, there's no longer any sponsors. Yeah, that's true. When someone does something consistently, especially my son and girlfriend, I call it their bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's your bit. It's your bit. You forgetting stuff, your bit. Ailments, your bit. Falling down. We are going to have falling words. down. Your bit. We're going to have words about that third motorcycle. Okay, what, whatever. There's. We the, will after the podcast. Yeah, that's fine. It's. I'll explain to you again what the deal is with that. Um. Shitty things are called a whipping. A whipping. A whipping. Like that's a whipping. Like oh, it's just such a whooping. I, I kind of say a whooping or a whipping. Yeah, I guess you do. I'd say whooping more like, than whipping. Like, oh, driving down to the... Driving what down a whip. To, oh, what dri a whip. Yeah, driving down to that party, right? on, down the tollway in the rain. That was a whooping. That was a whipping. It was a whip. Yeah. When, some, <laughs> when someone calls me boss, I think, ah, hey amen, bah. <laughs> That's cute. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I call... And you hate being called boss. When a waiter, when a waiter or a wait person, what am I supposed to say? A server says, "You got it, boss." You don't like that. Well, boss, boss is Cole's generation. Boss is not my generation. You don't like it. It's fine. It's just like when someone from Cole's generation addresses someone from my generation, maybe Sir, Mister Evans, may be more appropriate. Boss doesn't bother me. My generation would be dude. What's up, dude or man? Would you be okay with a young whippersnapper saying, you got it, dude? 
You got a boss. Then that would. Sound... I think boss sounds more respectful than dude. Boss? I don't know. I mean, I don't care that much. It's just it sounds funny to me. Um, I call milk milk. Ugh. Well, let me try that. it again. I call milk milk. So annoying. I say milk. And while we're on, okay, sorry, let me finish the yeah, letter. Finish it. Finish it, and then I'm going to, speaking of Cole, I'm going to bring up one more thing, and then we're going to call it a podcast. Okay. Sorry about another Allen-centric letter, Kelly. But it's you, okay. But you are the multi-millionaire star of a nationally syndicated radio show with two podcasts, and my man only has one podcast to hang his hat on. Love you both desperately. Your very best customer, Josh Cross, a.k.a. Good Strong JC. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Love you desperately. Yeah. Love you desperately. I thought I was going to be doing another podcast with my friend um, to talk about Real Housewives of New Jersey, but that's kind of dissipated um, because I, I like talking about Real Housewives, but I don't know if anybody keeps up that watch, that listens to A Sandwich and Some Lovin', but, you know, they just announced there's not going to be a reunion because this season has been so toxic and awful so they're not I don't know what's going to happen but I thought about launching a podcast to talk about my reality programs my Bravo Real Housewives but I don't know I don't know that's still up in the air so maybe I'll have three is my point okay um, you want to say something about Cole oh yeah so Cole and I we, we're always just talking about silly stuff and <laughs> You know how I am with the English language. I'm like, why can't we just say things the way they're, they're spelled? And I'm like, for example, so Cole and I are talking about this. I'm like, for example, buddy, I said, if there's a dude in your class and he spells his name S-E-A-N, that dude is seen. It's not Sean, because Sean would be S-H-A-W-N or S-H-O-N. Or S-H-A-U-N. Yeah, okay. But S E A N is seen. Well, because you're Sean. Well, then why isn't J E A N John? It is in, in France. Oui, oui. Because Sean in Ireland is S E A N. Because of in where? Sinead, like Sinead O'Connor is S I N. But J E A N. Sure, I'm talking sure. about here in the good old USA. Yeah, but we know. J E A N. We're a melting pot. J E A N is Jean. But I know a Frenchman named Jean Claude. Good eye, right? Which would mean S E A N would be seen. I I get your logic there, and that's why English is a, such a difficult language for people to learn. I don't know. These are the kind of things we talk about while we're sitting there at Starbucks waiting for, you know, before we go. I take them to to school. Oh, school's out now. But this is what this is. These are the kind of things we talk about. Well, thanks for sharing that with the rest of us. <laughs> the was very helpful. The weirdness with the English language and a lot of sports. I'm trying to get Cole to appreciate that the guys that played in the NBA in like the 80s and 90s, they were the goats. Mm. Michael, you know, mm -hmm. those guys. Yeah. Michael Jordan. Yeah. Not, not, you know, Luke is good, but he's not the goat yet. He's a good player, but he's not the goat yet. What do you think? I, I I will agree with you on okay. that. You just I love Michael Jordan. You just don't want to... Get... I love to watch Kyrie Irving play. I Kyrie think he's Irving's a lot great. of fun yeah. to watch play. He really I like is. him. I, you know, I just think Luca, you know, if he wasn't playing for the Mavericks, we'd probably be making fun of him for being a crybaby too. <laughs> he does cry a lot and whine and flop and stuff. But, Whoa! You know, well, he does. He's a big flopper. Whoa! Whoa. Well, that's just honest. You think he Luca flops a lot? Oh, that's... That's like soccer players. They flop and carry on, you well, know. I think that's but good. if he played for another team, we'd all be like, look at that whining crybaby. But because he's our guy, we're like, oh, it's just Luca being cute. <laughs> I think that's the Euro thing, the European players. I don't so. know. I like watching Kyrie. I think he's a lot of fun to watch. And Luca's fun to watch, too, only because he's a maverick. All you right. Know, you have to remember, he's only like, what, 25? 25. His brain is not even fully developed yet. Isn't it like 27, that they say? Crazy. 27, 28, when your brain is fully developed. He's still like a kid. He's got so many fun, there were so many cute videos of him um, online just goofing around and stuff because he's really just a kid. So I give him a break for that. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, real quick. Oh, ah, ah. Real quick. If you're looking for something to do, I'm, um, I found, you know, my, my mother and I, every day we play Wordle. Wordle. We play Quirtle. Quirtle. And we play Blossom. 
So I don't, Wordle, know, what, I don't know what that okay. is. So Wordle, everybody should know. You have five or six. You have six chances to guess a mystery word, right? And you know you have six chances, and that, that that's Wordle. With Quartle, it's four different panels. So you still have the same. No, you have nine guesses, I believe, because you're working. Yes, nine guesses. So you have four frames, and you have to figure out all four. There's even an octortal, but Mama doesn't want to play that one. But octortal is pretty fun. Matt Damon was in an octortal group. I remember him talking about that. So with that one, you have to solve eight puzzles. I think that's the maximum. Well, underneath the quartal, there are a bunch of different games you can play. And I found a new one that I am obsessed with. It is driving me nuts. Obsessed? I am. And that's also a very big annoying thing that influencers say, like, this louse, I am obsessed. Obsessed. This skin cream, I am obsessed. But I'm not saying like that. I'm, like, literally obsessed with it. Hmm. It's called Pilfer. <laughs> Pilfer? Pilfer. And I guess the best way to describe it is it's sort of like Scrabble. Weren't you telling me that? Was that you? Mm -mm. Or was somebody else was telling me? me? Was it me? So they give you, they randomly put you with people to play with, up to four. Sometimes I get in there and it's just me and one other person. You can also play the computer until you learn how it works because at first it takes you a minute. But the maximum you can be facing is three other opponents. So you don't know who each other is. You've got these little icons. I have no idea if I'm playing men, women, where they're from in the country, I have no idea, but I'm playing against them. And so you have 60 letter tiles, and they drop down one at a time, and you try to create words. But when the next word comes, so like if the word is, like if I put, if the word, uh, letters rat, R-A-T, came down, and the next letter came down was an E, my opponent could really quickly type in rate, and they would get the points and steal it from me. So it's stealing. It's called you know, pilfering. I know that sounds difficult. But y'all, this game has got me hooked so hard. It's going to be my next candy crush that I'm going to have to quit cold turkey. I'm hmm. afraid. But I'm loving it so far. I'm on the beginner level because I'm still trying to get my bearings. And sometimes I smoke everybody in there. I just smoke them. Mm -hmm. And then the next one I play, somebody comes along and kicks my butt. And I'm like, y'all should move up to inner... You can't talk to them. You cannot talk to them. So there's no bullying. There's no nothing. But I just want to say, you need to move up to intermediate and leave the beginners down here alone. Anyway, if you want to try it, let me know what you think. You're going to be mad at me. Or you're going to hate it and never play it again. But it's called Pilfer. But see, I love word games. That's my thing. Do you play any games at all? Can't, none come to mind. Uh, you know, See, I, I love I, work well, games. I mean, I play those games and I just kick everybody's ass and then it's no fun. Okay, and I, and try I, Pilfer. And then I quit. Try Pilfer because you'll kick everybody's butt and then they'll come, somebody will come back and kick yours. And it's so frustrating. Um, but I also do like the, the Washington Post uh, crossword puzzle every day online because that's free. So anyway, that's just a couple of things. Yeah, I don't play any online games really. No, not too much. No, just golf. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Game-wise. That's all. Oh, and Connections game. They play that at work a lot, too. I forget to play it some days, though. But that's what I'm up to if you're looking for a new fun game to play. All right, babe. Well, you got anything else? No, I think I've said enough. Okay. Well, I love you desperately. Love you. Love our listeners desperately. Love y'all. Love Jason and Momoa and Blaine and Maylee Vodka desperately. We need to buy a bottle and prove it. Well, as soon as we can get our hands on it, I'll buy yeah, it. Yeah, I guess it's in our liquor stores. I don't know. I haven't been in I haven't been in a liquor store since our Memorial Day party. Huh. Love Larry Allen desperately. I know. That was a, that was a tough one. That was a tough I feel one. Feel sad for his family, yeah. his cowboy family, and his wife and children. I know, that, sad. That was a tough one. To do, but I am sure we will podcast again real soon. And in the immortal words of the great Keanu Reeves, "Life is good. Have a good sandwich." Thank you, Michael.